all want to have a good experience in life and not and just be like, yes, we kicked ass. Yes, we succeeded. But to me, the biggest failure is never actually trying to do something. If you don't try and fail, you won't ever know if you succeed. At the end of your life, do you want to wake up at 85 years old and your back hurts? And you go, oh, shit, why didn't I do that? You don't. I'd rather have a life filled of uh, spectacular failures and a few successes just knowing that I don't go to bed every night wondering why didn't I do that. A buddy of mine called me, and I was in a bunch of bands at that time trying to be a rock star. I got pretty close, and I had hurt my hand, and I had to take a break. The guy says, can you be in Berkeley, California tomorrow? I'm like, why? He goes, you want to work for Paul McCartney? I'm like, I'll be there. I'll be there. So Paul is doing his 1989-1990 world tour. I'm a young guy. And I'm like, holy crap, Paul McCartney. You play bass, right? Like, yes, I play bass. Paul has a really remarkable, remarkable ability to connect with people in an authentic way. Again, I told you that word authentic is going to come up and come up and come up. Years later, uh, working with him, when you walk around like a major city, in New York, like I walked with him in New York City, there's a moment that he tried to to avoid in a beautiful and classy way. People look up, and if you're standing next to him and you're just moving through space, they go, you can see it a half a block down, they go, <gasps> and he does a beautiful thing. I've seen him do it over and over and over again. He doesn't like the volume, and he also doesn't want to be rude. So before they can go, he goes, hi, how you doing? Have a good day now. And people are like, Paul McCartney, talk to me. And then they hug and they scream, and he keeps moving through space. He does another thing that's really brilliant. People always want to photograph. I mean, I, I, could, I could show you wild photos throughout my career, but people really want a photo of Paul McCartney. And he, what he says, because he knows if he takes one photo, there is literally chaos in the streets. There, are, there is a mega mega pile up of people, and it's dangerous, to be frank. It really is. It's scary. It's weird. So what he says is, no, no, thank you. Not right now. Maybe later, though. So what I think is so brilliant about it, it's not just that he respects his own time. It's that he respects other people. He acknowledges people. He, you know, he lets people have a moment with him without him getting caught. And I think only someone who is authentic, someone who is kind and humble, like our next example, um, can do that. Things are playing along throughout the day. BB's going to play about 9 o'clock at night. He's the top dog headliner. There's an artist named Louis Belson. Louis Belson was his big band player, uh, drummer, and he, like some of those old big band uh, drummers, he would sit in front and go, you know, just incredible. And all of a sudden, in the middle of the afternoon, 3 o'clock, about 98 degrees, an entire wall of speakers <laughs> falls on the audience. So what I did and what others did is we did what I think came natural, be a person. So we ran to go help people. No one needed to tell us to go do it. It was a very frightening moment. And luckily, I was able to pick her up, put her on a gurney, and she was OK. And the baby, just so you know, the baby was OK. And I we remained uh, pen pals for a number of years. So everything is okay there. But what we had to do next to get the thousands and thousands of people there for that event was to rush to this little micro stage, not, not even bigger than this, that was about 100 feet away to just get another act up. And BB agreed to step up and sort of make a moment happen for the rest of the people attending after this scary incident. And, and I see Mr. King and I look down because, you know, I, at that point, I didn't realize you could actually be, be a person when you're the lowest guy in the totem pole and just be a person, say hi, or give him, the, give him the dude nod. He stopped me, put his hand on my chest. He said, kid, yes, Mr. King, I don't know who you are. I don't know where you came from, but I saw what you did out there to that woman, and I just want you to know you're a beautiful person, and I know we were meant to meet. And do you see this? I said, yes. It was a tie tack. 
ceramic tie tack with his Lucille guitar pin. It's a guitar, uh, a tie pin in the shape of his guitar. He says, I only take this off when something happens special to me, when I meet someone special, and I want to give this to you. It meant a lot to me. You can imagine. The band plays, the band plays. At the end of the, at the, end of the event of his set, um, a bunch of people w were trying to meet him and greet him and, and talk to him. And there was, um, there was a young man with his parents who clearly had cerebral palsy, you know, with the, um, a lot of gesticulations. And I don't know what happened in my 19-year-old brain. I don't know how I w rose to that occasion. Because selfishly, that would be pretty cool to have the story and be able to show you the tie tack now. About 10 minutes later, head of the festival says, dude, go to BB's. You better go to BB's uh, bus right now. I'm like, oh, shit, what did I do? Go to his bus right now. And I was like, oh, God, OK, I'm going to get fired. I don't know what's happening. And I get in there, and B.B. King, who's a famous sweater, he's much better at sweating than even I am, so <laughs> comes up and he goes, kid, God brought us together. And I don't know if you're a religious man, and I don't know if this is who you are or who raised you, but you're a beautiful man, and I love you. And he grabbed me. And my face got smushed in his man boobs with lots and lots of, uh, of sweat. But the thing that I, I want to state about that, to me, real leaders, they lead. And they lead by listening. And they lead just by being who they are. Leaders, true leaders acknowledge people. True, people, uh, true leaders, rather, look at you, your skills, your successes, and they're happy for you. They see you. When you're at the top of your game in any industry and you're not looking at the little guy, you're missing out.